hello and welcome to my channel in this video we are coming to learn how to build these three statements financial model together so we are coming to learn how we build these three statement financial model now i've been talking about the three statements financial model because it is the foundation for building all other financial models so whether it's um, a DCF model, a leveraged buyout model, whether it is an M&A model or any other model out there, the three statement financial model serves as the basis for preparing all the those that we have, those that we have in finance. So this is a skill, critical skill to have if you want to master financial modeling. Alright, so in this particular video, we are coming to look at the processes involved in building this particular financial statement model. And then I'll try as much as possible to add additional information as and when it is necessary. Alright, now this is the format of a financial model. So, um, since this is the three statement financial model, we have the heading here and we start by indicating that the figures we are dealing with are in USD, that is US dollars. And then from here, you have, so in your first column, this is what you um, indicate all your, uh, your descriptions. So this is kind of the descriptions column. So we have it there. So everything you want to write can be written here. So we have that. And then on the second column which is column b we have the years so we have 2018 through 2022 as the actuals so what we do is that we pick the actual historical data from the historical financial statements and then we input them into our financial model we are yet to go there so we have this years here and the A attached to it means actuals. And how we build this was to actually go to control one. So you go to control one and then you select the zero here. You input your um, your quotation mark, you type A and then you close your quotes and then you, you, you click OK. And that is what gives us the A here. And then we also have so we have five years of actual financial data and then we modeled this actual financial data into a, an eight year forecast. So from 2023 through 2030. So that's eight years, right? All right. So that's what we have there. The second item here is the number of days. So with the number of days, we want to indicate the number of days we have in each of these financial years. Now, uh, Ideally, the number of days in the financial year is 365 days, so we put it there. And then we have a check um, rule here. Now, the check rule is to make our um, kind of make it robust so that we can depend on it to make decisions. Now, the financial model is a decision making tool, it helps us to make decisions. So, if you are not um, able to depend or rely on it to make decisions, then that model is problematic. Now, because of the relevance of the model to decision financial decision making, um, it is very key to have your model checked for errors, anything like that. So that is why. So that is why we have the check here. And as you have, can see here, the check is for the balance sheet um, balance. So as we know in the balance sheet, the total of the um, non-current assets plus the current assets should be equal to our the total of our liability equity, equity, owner's equity. So that is what we have. Now this check here, we are taking the absolute value of the difference between the total asset and the total liabilities plus equity. And then we are saying that if the absolute value of those um, these two figures, or the difference between the two figures is less than one, then, or is greater than one, then we are saying it is an error. 
because you are using the absolute the absolute will convert any negative number into a positive number so that's the reason for the absolute so if it is greater than one then we have an error else it is um balanced all right so we have it there now we have balanced there because our model is working perfectly so that's what we have and then the next thing we do is to have a set of assumptions and drivers now these assumptions are driven by what we call financial ratios or accounting ratios so we have accounting ratios and the ratios we have them from sales growth rate through our tax as a percentage so you indicate your assumptions and then you indicate the basis upon which you are making those assumptions so you calculate them historically and then based on these historical um, assumptions you can make these assumptions and drivers right as we have it here if you want to know more you can look out for my video on this particular financial model how we built it from scratch then we have the statement of financial position um assumptions and drivers as we have it here then we go to our statement of profit or loss now before we even continue after doing this three rules on after completing the three rules the next thing to do ideally is to jump to your financial statements and input your um, financial data your historical financial data so you have to come here and then you bring in all the historical financial data that you have and put them here so we have done all of them here and because these are historical financial data we are not the one calculate, calculating them so what we do is that we indicate them in blue which means that they are hard coded they are hard coded numbers so we put them in blue so we have that and then we do the same for our statement of financial position and sometimes you do it for the statement of cash flows if it is available sometimes too you can have just the statement of profit or loss and the balance sheet and then you can use those two um financial statements to prepare flow statements of cash flows because the statement of cash flows is made up of items from within the um statements of profit or loss and the balance sheet then after that you build you use the um the assumptions that you have made in this assumptions and drivers column to forecast items of the statement of profit or loss or the income statement so you use those items to forecast our sales revenue cost of sales sgna expense now that this the depreciation expense is gotten from our uh depreciation expense is usually gotten from our ppe schedule or the property planting and equipment schedule so this is one of the last things you forecast and then the interest expense as well this is gotten from our statement our um, supporting schedule for our long-term liabilities all right but it depends on the method you are using so you forecast all of these using the assumptions and drivers that we have now the last thing you do is the property plant and equipment it's gotten from a schedule which is the last one one of the last things you do when building your financial model and then also our cash and cash equivalents is also from our statements of cash flows this is the last thing these are some of the last things you do within your financial model now when you watch the video you get more understanding on what i am talking about and then also uh, so from there you go to the statement of cash flows complete it and then whatever figure you get here the cash and cash equivalent at the end is what we have within the statement of financial position so this is our value two hundred and seventy thousand nine hundred forty three dollars for our cash and cash equivalent at the end of the period 2023 so when we come to our statement of financial position cash and cash equivalent we have the same figure here so that means that and when you look at the reference from our uh, our name bar here or our formula bar sorry you will see that this particular um, cell is referencing g 
77 which is our cash in cash equivalent right here so as we can see this is it all right so we have that then after building our model so this is our supporting schedule so first you indicate these three rules then you continue to um bring in your historical financial data after bringing them in you go back to the um assumptions and drivers and calculate the ratios and any other drivers that are relevant for the analysis using the historical data and then after that you use these drivers to forecast the financial statements and then after that you prepare your statement of cash flows using your loss of profit or loss and the statement of financial position or the balance sheet and then lastly you prepare supporting schedules schedules supporting schedules actually come within the statement of financial position or the balance sheet so you prepare these even before you prepare your statement of cash flows so this is a quick guide to as to how to prepare a three statement financial model now there are other additional items that we indicate in our which is charts and graphs so we built these graphs together in my previous video so each of the graphs are from the each of the three statement financial models so we have the one on the statement of profit or loss another one on the statement of financial position and then the last one on the statement of cash flows now i i said in my previous video that i will be continuing this particular financial model and we are going to add what we call sensitivity analysis sensitivity analysis so be on the lookout for my of my next video because i'm going to build the sensitivity analysis to and add it to this particular model now after building your model what we do is that we uncheck the grid lines of our model or of our sheet so that we can have a clearer look so if you look at this we don't have grid lines for our excel why because it has been turned off how did i do that i just went to view and then you see grid lines here so when i check my grid lines the grid lines are back so as you can see these thin gray lines that we have here if i uncheck it it goes off so this is a best practice to um, use when you are building any financial model and then also you we what we do is that we freeze our paints so as i'm scrolling you can see that we have the balanced year we have all these items and then the years here so i freeze these three pins so that i know that at any point in time my balance sheet is balancing and i am working under the correct year so that's the purpose for freezing the pins as we um, have seen here and how do you freeze the pins you just click here so wherever you want the the, the, the pins to be freezed you click there and then you go to your view tab and then you have freeze pins so i can come here and then you see our freeze pins because i have already freeze the pins so the next thing i can do is to unfreeze it so that's what we have there and then after building everything we do what we call we group the um the various um rules within our um, our um, our sheet so we group them so as we can see we have a heading here assumptions and drivers so they are all there and then we have another heading statements of profit or loss we have it there we have another heading statement of financial position so what we do is that after building everything you will select all the items with under assumptions and drivers using so after selecting the first one i can come here sorry so i'll come here select the entire rule scroll down to the last one and then i'll hold my shift and click it and then after clicking i'll come to data tab and i'll come to outline and then you see group so i'll just click on group 
and then it will group the entire row for me so that is how we group our financial models so after grouping all of the items then you can you will see this one and two here the one means here yeah, close everything so as you can see i've closed everything and then the two here means open everything or after closing everything i can decide to open them one after the other so if i want to see just assumptions and drivers i'll just click on the plus sign here to open so if i want to see my statement of profit or loss and not the assumptions and drivers i'll close it using the minus sign here and then i'll close the second one to view my statement of profit or loss all right so that's the last thing you do when we are building the three statement financial model i hope you found this particular video useful please hit the subscribe button right below this video behind or beside my channel name and i'll see you again in my next video